Hey folks, Scott Rogan here, the Home Cinema Architect, checking in for Rogue Home Cinema, and today we're going to run through the very initial uh, concepts, this is like a feasibility concept for a particular room. So the room's featured here in front of us, you can see it's a little bit awkward, we've got a straight wall coming into a 90 degree wall here, but this one's actually tilts back, this one tilts across, this one straightens up again, we've got this kind of nook in here and a nook in here and the linen cupboard so it's it's a little bit awkward it's not straightforward what it does show is that there's a few opportunities there's a robe on the side in fact these these opportunities all the way around this room we've got robes on the side and the end we got the linen cupboard here so you know we could put equipment racks in those locations or we could even put projectors or maybe even speakers uh, protruding from those walls so there's some some opportunities but naturally this outside wall here is a uh, is a fixed boundary now there's a number of windows but we really don't fuss too much about windows till later in the project because we can simply kind of pretend they're not there anyway so we've got the entry here which is open to begin with but uh, the clients indicated that we'll be putting a door in so we can um, uh, keep obviously sound and light away and keep this room very intimate and dedicated so what is the process first of all we don't run off the floor plans we actually measured the room as built so we got accurate measurements between the tape measure and the laser measure which is also a little bit tricky trying to get these angles in here so we take a whole bunch of measurements so back in the SketchUp program here it um, it all matches up so naturally the entrance is through here so the question is okay how do we start designing a cinema room that actually works really well so naturally we we do want a quite a long room so we want to fit and well in this case should i start with the fact that these clients need five seats in total five good seats which given the width of the room is on average only around 3.3 meters wide it means we're going to have to look at two rows of seating um, so straight away we know we're looking at two rows uh, because of the actual seat width you're not really you're going to get not going to get five in one row too comfortably i mean you, you could put more seats over here but now you've you've got the screen over here you've got really crappy seats away from the screen so it's not really going to work we want our seating more or less middle of screen and also of the sound field you know if we for example had a speaker here and seats over here not very good so we know we're looking at two rows of seats uh, the other thing is you know what features need to fit in this room so there's actually an arcade gaming machine which they'd like to keep in this room as a as a feature and as a bit of a um, you know a bit of decor so you know there's the arcade machine and a couple of seats and you know when you use it the seats come away and when you don't use it the seats pretty much sit with our there so you know we've got to get that in and we got to get the seats in so it's okay well which way around in the room is this going to work so here's a scenario with this obviously seats in this end of the room scenario of seats on this end it's like well how, how does that work so first of all we need to look at what two rows of seats are going to give us a, a good fair sweet spot for for video and for sound so we put a little sweet spot measurement in here for the front row and we want to make sure that this front row that's sort of the end of the red here is like our maximal screen width we don't really want to top that look personally I, I don't mind viewing wider so i you know we know what boundaries we can push but ideally we want to be pretty much on that red mark there which is a 60 degree view you know, put that in perspective sitting in the middle of a commercial cinema is usually about a 55 degree view so you know it's pretty big uh now we also want the back row whoops too much going on I want the back row here to not be too small so the minimal here is um it's not not texted in this one here but it's about 36 degrees is the 
minimal size we want. Where are we? 36 degrees is this inside edge for the back row. Never mind the color coding. It's a little bit different between front and back at the moment. So, so we got our front and our back row seat. So where these two intersect is pretty well the sweet spot looking after both rows of seats. We know that we're going to get a good result for, for picture. Um, and look, you know, it, it's nice to keep a 45 degree for our audio, which means the back row is going to be a little bit more narrow. But um, that's, in this case, always going to happen. So it's like, well, at least we'll work on the things that we can control. So let's plot that screen in there now. Now, obviously, guys, I've already worked this room out. So <laughs> there's a lot of jiggling around to just have them fall in place. But so here we've got a, our screen in place. It's uh, what have we got there? 3.1 meters in width. And uh, we'll put our front row in again. You can see that so that's comfortable for that front row. It, it could go even bigger. That's 55 degrees, which is awesome. I really love that. At least 55 degrees for a front row. It feels like smack bang in the middle of a commercial cinema. It's, it's really epic. Uh, let's check our back row again. All right, so we're just on the limit there of what would be 36 degrees for that. So um, that is our seating here and here. Now, of course, we need to make sure we can get from seat to seat. So the back's going to have to go onto a platform, usually about 400 mil in height is the sort of height of platforms we usually need to go for. For the front row to see past uh, back row to see past the front. We haven't even got to a 3D profile yet. This is a stage one of cinema designs. But, you know, we know there'll have to be a platform. And, you know, if we put doors in here, we've got plenty of real estate to put in some steps. No problems at all. The other thing is, you know, when we're reclined on the lounge, you know, how much room do we have between our feet and the back of our head? So we've got over because our head comes back a bit more than just the back of the seat. So we've got about, you know, 1900 of space. Most people are less than 1.9 meters tall. So fully reclined, legs hanging out the front. We're not going to hit the front row there. Very important. Now look, we don't always, with a reclined seat, get enough room for a, you know, walkway comfortably from one seat to the other. The fact is you're going to have to recline back if this person wants to go out to the toilet, you know. Um, but once everyone's settled in place and reclined back, you know, you're sweet. We've got enough room for those seats. Now, we want these two rows, obviously, to be quite close to keep these parameters in check. So that all works. Happy days. Our gaming system's over here. That's really cool. Um, you know, there's a bit of a nook in here. So just thinking ahead, could be a good spot for candy bar. Um, and we do have some more room back here as well good spot for some art and decor it could be you know a life-size Iron Man figurine something like that so you know these little nooks can certainly be utilized to add theme and excitement and some cool stuff so what do we got now um, the screen here has been considered not so just around the seats but also considering the wall around it so we got 400 mil space over here on the right hand side what's that for well, ideally, we want a screen which has the speakers behind the screen. So just like a real cinema, sound and the picture are completely coupled into one. So the speakers are behind the screen. Now, we can do that a few ways. We can have a perforated screen with lots of little holes in it. But the speakers do need to be about a foot behind the screen to make that work. All right, so just threw some extra info in there for you guys. So um, now I was saying a perforated screen allows sound to go through the screen, though we need about one foot, 300 mil, between the front of the speaker and the screen for that sound to successfully go, you know, penetrate the screen without too much reverberation or blockage of particularly the high frequencies. So that's a rule we need to really follow. So we've got 300 mil along here and that speaker 
oh, give or take maybe 20, 30 mils. So in this design, we may actually inch this screen forward, maybe literally 20, 30 mil, just to make that fit a little bit better. So this, this whole room could go back 50 mil to actually make that 300 mil um, fit in perfectly. So, or we could tow the speaker in a little bit less. We've actually got the speaker towed in about 15 degrees. We want all our speakers towed in towards the listeners. It doesn't have to be directly to the middle of the room, but 10, 15 degrees angle in is good. And of course, as we angle in the speakers, it adds depth to the speaker. So it's only 100 mil deep, the speaker, but um, it doesn't represent that very well, about 100 mil. Uh, but with a bit of toe in, it's going to add, obviously, to its overall profile. So all of these things considered, we're in the right ballpark here, give or take, like, you know, 30 to 50 mil. So this is looking good. Now, the other thing of a perforated screen is viewing distance for the front row. We really need to be at least three meters back so we don't see the holes on the screen. If we're inside three meters, you can start to actually see the perforations in certainly some uh, forms of video like bright clouds with a white sort of projection you can pick up the holes it's not very nice so minimal three meters so you know we, we've we've got the seating both rows to the screen we've got the screen to the front row and we've got the screen to the back wall it's all trying to fit but we've you know we've this room's shaped up pretty awesome, actually, with, with all of these things considered. So now naturally, it's nice to use as much of the room as possible. So there's a fair bit of space in here, which, you know, is kind of cut out of the room because we want a nice symmetrical wide sound and picture for all our seats because naturally this, this speaker here is going to have a friend in the way of Mr. Left Channel which will be sitting somewhere like that. Whoop! Well, I've done that. I've deleted this guy. I should hit pause on the video when I muck around. We're going to bring him over here. Something like that. Okay. And of course, there's a center channel as well. So all, all, all of these speakers are going to fit, no problems. It was the... Uh, what's it called the the right channel that was going to be the trickiest one so we're planning our screen based on the right channel speaker because that's the one in the most difficult position so all right so we've got a bit more space back here we, we could put the rack back there because the screen's going to sit about 700 about above floor level we could put a door in there for you know the disc player so we could load the, the, the DVDs. It's about the only device we need to touch in a cinema system is the disc player. Everything else is done by remote, streamed from the net. Uh, so yeah, the disc player needs to be accessible by the user, but everything else can actually, we could put a rack in here. They're about 500 square, 550. Oh no, 500 square, let's go 500 by 500 here. Um, I'll make a component out of that. Let's just see if that fits in there behind that speaker. Sure does. So, in fact, it could, um, could probably be something like that because then we can get the front and back of the rack. So you literally have like a manhole under the screen, crawl in behind the screen and have all the gear racked up in a nice tool rack. Very simple, efficient, serviceable installation, ventilation to boot. The end user doesn't have to touch it. It's all done via remote. All we need is the disc player, so we will need a little, little spot for the disc player to be easily accessible from in the room. But that's good use of that space. And in this case, we don't need to use the robe or the linen cupboard or anything like that, which is kind of cool as well. It stays in the room uh, as far as cabling and and you know we want to minimize holes to other rooms because that will create sound leakage and when we got bedrooms here and here we definitely don't want to do that although this family's a bit more growing up i think the youngest is you know into the teens now so 
you know, it's either join the party in the cinema room or put your headphones on, you know, it's, it's not a major issue with uh, sound isolation for, for this family at least. So, but still we try not to put more noise through the house as much as we can. So this concept is shaping up really pretty awesome. Um, this nook is sort of aiding us somewhat with this back of seats so to put some decor in here. Um, the surround speakers, look, it's going to be a few challenges on where to put them, but these solutions around that, we will find a way. That's, you know, the next stages of design. This, this initial concept is really the core and a feasibility on, you know, how we can do things. So let's see how the other side um, shaped up. Oh, one more thing, sorry, on this one is making sure our projection throw distance actually works for the given screen size. And uh, indeed, we've got, this is, this is the throw distance here. So the projector's back here. Where is the projector? I'll put them in there. There's a projector. If the projector's back here, it can project as large as out here and um, actually as small as, you know, somewhat smaller. So this projector will, will beam onto this width of screen, no problems at all. Uh, we got a little bit of headroom, in fact. Um, and tucking it back in this nook is kind of nice because projectors do make a little bit of noise. So I want to minimize noise. So having it directly above the seat is not so good. But we'll probably put a you know, spec a little hush box for this. We'll put the, a cowling around the projector to quieten it down so these back rows of seats are not so affected. But that's quite handy, having that little nook there. Um, happy days. Let's look at the other scenario over here. So in this concept, flipping the room, we actually have the front row maxed out on screen size here. Ideally, as I say, I don't mind sitting a bit bigger, but for most people, front row at around that 60 degree view. So that's the front row. Let's see how the back row is looking. Back row is, oh, that calculator is a little bit out. Is a little bit, oh, that's working as well. It's working as well. So we've got both front and back rows looking pretty tight there. Uh, projected throw works fine, that's no problems. Though this time the screen to keep a nice symmetrical sort of look to the screen, we got a bit of um, bit of nook here that's sort of in the way. Uh, let's see what we can do with that. If I find the speakers, there's an example of the speaker there. So really get that speaker in the right spot, and that's quite a slim and narrow speaker. It's it's, it's quite you know it's quite small. It's quite a custom design being as neat and tidy as possible in size. What we could do, because this is not really a load bearing wall, we've got other walls around the house holding up the roof. So we could actually take, you know, that speaker's probably oh, 400 mil in height. So we could take a 400 high by whatever depth out of that wall. It's brick, the construction here. So it's like a clay brick. We could actually cut that out and put the speaker in. And, and we're all good. Now, of course, this speaker is really close to the screen and the front row in this case is less than three meters. So as we've learned, this room is not gonna, or this, this concept, shall I say, is not gonna suit a, there are we notes, not gonna suit a perforated screen. We're gonna have to go a woven screen. And they, they cost a bit more money. In fact, uh, where we're from, access to the sort of products that we we can get and at the right performance level the woven screen sort of double that of the perforated screen so this one's going to cost a little bit more money to do properly um, it's a little bit screen size screen sizes are about the same about three to 3.1 meters so it'll really come down to you know what sort of style does the customer like? Do they like walking into the room and seeing the layout like this? Or do we like walking into the room seeing the layout like, like this? Does that ever matter? Um, there's obviously some preferences and choices. Uh, obviously heaps of room over this side for the rack, but we're kind of making the room smaller than what we started. This, this sort of, I guess, maximizes the 
size of the room overall. Uh, we then need to consider you know, surround sound speakers. How does that work? Well, both situations actually have challenges. I wouldn't say one is a whole lot better than the other. Um, so ideally, it will come down to you know what style do we prefer with this um, uh, main stage or screen arrangement. And from that feedback, we'll continue designing based on that concept. So we're not spending a lot more time of hours digging into a concept that isn't going to fly. So there you have it, the very initial design stages of a custom home cinema and going through the key parameters that a two row cinema really need to meet. And as you can see guys, we're squeezing the 20, 30 mil here and there, trying to find the ideal situation. And every time you add some distance here, you're pulling away from the other side of the room. So it is tricky, but it makes it fun because you, you never quite know what you're gonna get um, when you start. Every cinema is different. Um, that's what makes it fun. So guys, I hope that uh, gave you some really cool insights. Uh, do subscribe if you'd like to learn more. Uh, we're basically just gonna share our journey and story as we go. So for you guys that really love the technical stuff, you can have that. And for people that just really like to uh, understand um, what sort of engineering's involved with these sorts of things, so you can make a, a wiser decision on, on your team, then of course this is good value to you as well. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, Scott Rogan. Cinema Architect here for Rogue Home Cinema. Cheers, bye.